how different of a war is 2034 going to be than what we expect? Is it anything out of the ordinary in your mind, imagination, in your mind that you say, these are a couple of things that's going to happen that nobody's probably paying attention to today? I think it's important to point out, like 2034 is a cautionary tale. It's not a predictive tale. Of course. In so much as we're not trying to predict the exact technology, but we're trying to show like this, these are the trends and you hit the evolution of war. So the one thing you always see is that, you know, one technology kind of overtakes another technology. And so oftentimes, you know, as Americans, we're sitting here and we're constantly trying to like refine our technology and we're spending all this money on new aircraft carriers and on new jets uh, and fighter planes. But we're not asking ourselves the questions like, is this the right technology to be investing in? And you see that in 2034, there's a massive cyber attack at the beginning of the book. And what that cyber attack does is it acts as a lever, a leveler. So suddenly all these very high tech platforms we have, they don't work. Like you can't turn them on. So without spoiling anything in the book, I would tell you like when you meet Wedge, right? He is flying this state of the art F-35 Joint Strike Fighter that doesn't work. The last time you see Wedge, he is piloting a generation one F-18 Hornet built like circa 1990 uh, on his final mission that's got no technology in it. And so thematically, one of the, the issues the book wrestles with is how does technology work in a war? How do we advance, take advantage of technologies and then have to sometimes use old technologies to outsmart our adversary? Essentially, are you saying that the modern technology is easier to hack into and tap into than the old technology? Yeah, it is. And sometimes the way you defeat technology is without technology. Like, can I give you an historical example? Please. Yeah. So like, um, I'm a history buff. One of, the, one of my favorite battles I've studied is the Battle of Agincourt which was fought in 1415. It was made famous by William Shakespeare in the play Henry V. And at that battle, basically, a British force had invaded France. They were at the end of their supply lines, uh, ill-equipped, trying to get back to England, strung out when the entire French army assembled against them. This is like the cream of the French medieval nobility. And they were decked out on the battlefield of Agincourt, the French, with what was the most state-of-the-art technology at the time. And that technology was plate armor. They'd figured out how to fold steel into plates to make these knights like unstoppable. So the French knights come out there with their ex very expensive, technologically state-of-the-art plate armor. It rains the night before on that field, and they're gonna go destroy this ill-equipped, smaller English army. They go and charge across this field, and they kind of get bogged down in the mud because their, their armor is so damn heavy. And the French and the English have a totally different technology that is far less far less expensive, um, and that's the longbow. And they shower down arrows on the French knights and just slaughter them. It's one of the greatest French military defeats of all times. That is an example of yeah, you might have the most state of the art technology in your plate armor or in your F thirty five or your Ford class aircraft carrier, but it's the wrong technology for the battle you're about to fight. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.